Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to look at some tips and tricks when using parenting in combination with a Boolean workflow. So a bit of a short one today, unfortunately I seem to be losing my voice and bearing in mind I'm getting married on Thursday, that's probably not the best. So I'm keeping this short and sweet in the attempt to recover as quickly as possible. So recently I've been making these suits of sci-fi armour and there's a lot of parts to each of these models. They're made up of segments and it was easier to create as different parts and just move together by parenting objects one to another. But as these are being designed for 3D printing, all of these parts are going to need to be boolean together and there are some ways to speed that up, but that can cause some problems with the parenting process. So what I want to do is just talk through those problems and how we can overcome them. So what I've done here is set up three cubes in different colours to make this easier to show. Now when boolean together objects, I use one trick that's going to speed up life a lot. And that trick is that normally what you have to do is click, shift click, and if you've activated ball tools, to do that go to edit preferences, this is Blender 4.2. So in add-ins just type in ball and then activate ball tools with that tick box. What that will allow you to do is just press control and plus and it will automatically set up the union boolean. So to demonstrate this what I've got is three cubes, one in green, one in red and one in a purpley blue colour. And what we're going to do is we're going to parent them together and we're going to do this in a hierarchy. So what I'm going to do is just click the cube in blue, shift click on the one I want to parent it to which is going to be the red one and I'm going to press control and P and I'm going to set parent to object. Then I'm going to do the same with the red cube, shift click on the green, control and P and set parent to object. Now this has created a really nice hierarchy. You can see here over here my scene collection that it's now showing that we've got cube three, which is the green one, which is in control of cube two, and cube two is in control of the cube that's in blue. And it's quite nice to have this hierarchy as it sets everything up nicely. Now what this means, if I click the green cube, this is the one that is in control of everything because it's in control of the red cube and the red cube is in control of the blue cube. I can G to move this around or R to rotate it around and everything will rotate with it. But if I want to move the lower parts, I can select my red bit, press R, and that will just rotate the red cube and the blue cube because in the hierarchy it's below it. And then finally I can move the blue cube, no problem without affecting the others, and I can always go back to the green cube and still affect everything. It makes moving around objects much easier if you've got lots of different bits. Now in reality what you'd probably do is use a rig for this in most instances, but that still does involve parenting. But even if it's just let's say a weapon, or in the instance of that very segmented armour, it'd be really tedious to have to select each individual part and parent it to an armature or a rig. So what I'd normally do is just parent one part to the rig and everything else is parented to that controlling part at the top of the hierarchy. But when 3D modelling for 3D printing, or in some other instances, this can cause some problems. And those problems are related to the fact that each object needs the other part to be, let's just phrase it, in existence. They need to be there in the scene to know where it is in relation to everything else. Now, this only becomes a problem when you're going to do one function that I'm aware of, but it is a function that I use a lot. And that is that when booleaning objects together, so let's just boolean this to this, if we press Control and Plus, and that's using the included add-on ball tool that comes with Blender. Just make sure you activate it in the preferences. It creates our boolean and you can see it's joined those objects together. It has now become one object, which is why it's been colored red. And that's no problem. That's just H to hide that. In fact, let's just go back and do that with these two. So I'm gonna click, shift click, control and plus, and we've created that union. But importantly, hidden behind the scene, there is actually that cube still as a wireframe just here. And if I just come back here and apply this, I can still G and move that cube so we can see it. This was behind the other cube and we can see it's still controlling the blue cube. So I could rotate that around. And even if we hide this, which would be normal, the blue cube stays where it is. So that's really useful that we can do that and it causes no problems. Where the problem comes is that normally when I use ball tools, if I'm doing this for 3D printing, I don't want to have to click, shift click, control and plus, then come here and then apply it. It just adds an extra stage that's really tedious. 
Instead, what I'm going to do, so let's just use these two as an example, is I'm going to press Control, Shift, and Plus, and that is going to create the Boolean destructively. It's not going to create a modifier, so I have nothing to apply. It just does it in one really quick click. But there's an issue with this. Because of that process, it actively destroys the cube that was originally there. So in this instance, the blue cube was destroyed along the way. And that can cause some issues. So the issue is that if we do this, let's say with this red cube, and we shift click on the green cube, and we want to parent it together, control shift and plus, you'll notice that the blue cube suddenly jumps back to where it originally was. And the reason why that's happened is that now the red cube no longer exists. There's no hidden version of it anywhere, which means that the blue cube doesn't know where to go. It's got nothing to relate itself to. So we need a way of solving this. And in fact, there are several. So perhaps the easiest way to solve this, if we remember our hierarchy, is that we can work backwards up our hierarchy. If the blue cube is being controlled by the red cube, if I click the blue cube and then shift click the red cube, I can control shift and plus, and that will join everything together and it's not gonna cause a problem because the blue cube doesn't exist anymore to jump back and the red cube is still being controlled in its position by its parenting to the green cube. And then I can click, shift click, control shift and plus to the green cube and we've got everything sorted out quite nicely. Now this does work. It's probably one of the easier solutions, just remembering this order. But if you've got a model as complex as my earlier one, remembering this order is, well, tedious. Instead, what we can do is actually just get rid of the parenting. And what we can do is click everything, and then you can either go to object, and then parent, and then we can clear parent. Or instead of pressing the control and P menu to bring up the set parent, we could press alt and P, which is the clear parent object. And people seem to always forget that this alt and P exists. Now, if we just click clear parent, bear in mind we've selected everything. This is what makes this a nice process. We can do it en masse. If I press alt and P and clear parent, then you'll notice things start jumping back to where they originally were. Let's just undo that. Instead, we want to press alt and P and clear the parent, but keep the transformation. Now, at this point, you can see our cubes have split back out. And at this point, I can now join these together in whatever order I want, and it's not going to cause any problems. So hopefully that's two tips that's going to make your parenting and Boolean workflow a little bit simpler. That control shift and plus to Boolean objects together more rapidly. You can do that on mass. So I could do that, for example, but I generally wouldn't when making more complex models as it's more likely to go wrong. And then using alt and P to be able to clear our parent, but keeping the transformation. Have a great day, guys.